So good evening friends, this is Dr. Vineet Sahagal and welcome to this session on clinical case diaries. Today we will discuss about an important corneal ectatic disorder. Okay, so I am Dr. Vineet Sahagal and I have done my post graduation from AIMS. I am available exclusively in the Unacademy Need Plus program and you can subscribe for the Unacademy Need Plus program with my coupon code that is Dr. Vineet YT and please click the bell icon at the bottom of the video and please subscribe for the Unacademy Need PG YouTube channel and you will never miss a notification of any important update. So I start with the question, a 20 year old male came to the IOPD with blurring of vision even after putting glasses. So he has a retinoscopy value which has a spherical as well as cylindrical component. So you have minus 3 diopter as spherical and minus 3.75 diopter as the cylindrical component. The corneal thickness is 420 micrometer and on corneal topography there are irregular mires. So what is your most probable diagnosis? Your options are Muren's ulcer, Fuchs dystrophy, keratoconus or anterior lenticonus. So first of all, whenever you get a question like this, how to solve? So first see the various hints in the question. So the patient is a young adult, 20 year old. He is there with the blurring of vision okay so even after putting the glasses he is having a blurring of vision if you can see his refractive power he is myopic and he has high cylinder another point that you can see here is the pachymetry the corneal thickness is 420 micrometer so what is usual corneal thickness it is around 520 to 540 micrometer okay and when we do a corneal topography studies we see irregular myers. I would tell you in my lectures what is the regular and what is irregular myers. So all these hints, a young adult, a high cylinder, a corneal thinning and irregular myers are basically hinting towards a disease which is called keratoconus. So remember, keratoconus is a type of corneal ectatic disorder which is non-inflammatory in nature. Remember, there can be ectasia in the anterior staphyloma also. There can be ectasia in desmetocel also. But that is inflammatory. And keratoconus is non-inflammatory. Very important point. It is non-inflammatory corneal ectatic disorder. Now, to know about the various signs that are seen in keratoconus, we can have this mnemonic. I have famous plans ready buddy so i goes with the irregular myers h goes with the hydropes v goes with the wogstria f goes with the flisher ring m goes with the munson sign s goes with the scissor reflex p goes with the paracentral corneal thinning r goes with the risuti sign and b goes with the bow tie pattern asymmetry on keratometry so these are the various signs that we can see on keratoconus now what these signs actually means so if you can see, this is a keratoscope, okay? And you can see here, there are various circles in a definite pattern. So these are regular myers. When you get a keratoconus, 
you get irregular mires okay so it can be one mire like this one mire like this other mire can be like this so these are irregular mires that you see in keratoconus the next thing is hydrops so if you can see here there are the various layers of cornea so this one is the epithelium stroma followed by your epithelium basement membrane sorry blue colored then stroma then your duas membrane followed by your descent membrane and endothelium okay so duas membrane is sometimes considered as a separate layer sometimes considered as a layer in the stroma also per se what happens in hydrops so in the cases of keratoconus what happens is because of the corneal thinning the aqueous humor which is beneath the endothelium it goes into the stroma okay because of the descent membrane tear because of the corneal thinning the aqueous humor goes inside the stroma and this is called hydrops okay so whenever there is a hydrops this means the patient is having a very severe type of keratoconus and this hydrops can lead to scarring remember few strias can also be seen in the keratoconus these are called vogue stria do not confuse it with the hab stria that is seen in carat in the congenital glaucoma the vogue stria if you put the pressure on the eyeball they disappear okay so h goes with the hydrops and v goes with the vogue stria then the next thing is flisher ring so remember do not confuse a flisher ring with a kf ring that is seen in wilson's disease in flisher ring you have f goes with iron so we have fe that is the symbol of iron so flisher ring is basically deposition of iron particles on the base of the cone of keratoconus okay so you can have a line like this in the center of cornea which is a flisher ring the next is munson sign what is munson sign when you look downwards there is a lid bowing so you, if you can see here there is a lower lid bowing on seeing down why because you have a conical shaped cornea okay then what is scissor reflex whenever you do a retinoscopy when you put the retinoscopy in front of the eyeball there is a fundus glow that comes and in this fundus glow if we see the retinoscopy glow and we move the retinoscope right or left the fundal glow and the movement of the reflex that is either with the glow or against the glow okay so you can see the more explanation in my retinoscopy session also so either it is with the motion or against the motion because in a keratoconus there is a irregular astigmatism so what you see is the glow of the fundus and the streak they are going like this so this is scissor so this is called scissor reflex in keratoconus okay very important is scissor reflex in keratoconus then we have paracentral thinning and bow tie pattern whenever we have a keratoconus the center or paracentral part of cornea is thin so if you can see this is a pentacam which is an investigation of choice for a patient of keratoconus okay so if you can see here in the center in the center you are seeing there is a yellowish color so at the more the colors are towards red the thinner is the cornea okay so you have a central or paracentral thinning in the keratoconus then keratometry if you can appreciate so these are the if i join the lines like this it becomes like this okay so i can just make it like here okay this is called asymmetrical bow tie pattern okay usually it is like this okay but this asymmetry of the keratometry this is an important sign of keratoconus okay so these are the various features of a keratoconus 
now you can also have a Rizzuti sign. What is Rizzuti sign? So basically, if you can see here, friends, this is our cornea. In the center, you have a pupil and this brown color is your iris. So if I put light from the temporal side, usually the part of the iris that is illuminated, only less than half of the iris is seen. Why it is less than half of the iris seen in normal people? The reason is because the iris configuration is not a concave. It is a more of a flat or concave or a convex type. So it does not allow light to go through and through in the aqueous humor. But when you have a conical cornea, so your anterior chamber is more deep here. So now if you put the light more than half, if you can appreciate here in the keratoconus patient, more than half of the iris is illuminated. Okay. This is called Rizzuti sign. Okay. So the next question is, what is the treatment of keratoconus? So first we give spectacles. If the patient is not very comfortable with spectacles, then we give the RGP lenses. It is rigid gas permeable lenses. But the question is even after giving rigid gas permeable lenses, there is a progressive increase in the retinoscopy value. So this means the corneal thinning is increasing and the curvature of cornea is changing. So what is the procedure that we can do in these patients? Your so options are LASIK, phototherapeutic keratectomy, conductive keratoplasty or collagen cross-linking. So the answer here is collagen cross-linking. Remember, LASIK is a procedure which is basically done to reduce the refractive error. Phototherapeutic keratectomy, this is a procedure which we use basically to remove any superficial corneal opacity. Conductive keratoplasty is not a keratoplasty. It is a procedure which is done basically to remove a small degree of presbyopia or hypermetropia. Okay, so it is basically remove a small degree of presbyopia or hypermetropia. Collagen cross-linking is the procedure that we use to basically reduce the product product progression of a keratoconus. So what is collagen cross-linking? Basically, I told you it is done in the cases of progressive keratoconus. The mechanism of action is that what we do is we have to make the covalent bonds between the various collagen fibers. So when I told you in the anatomy of the cornea that there are the lamellar arrangement of the collagen fibers in the stroma of the eye. So in the collagen cross-linking procedure, what we do is we make the covalent bonds between the various collagen fibers. So what we are doing is we are making them rigid and making them stiff. So they do not basically get more deformed and cause more progression of the keratoconus. So sometimes it is asked what is the procedure. So the procedure is first we remove the epithelium of the cornea. This is called epithelium scraping. Then what we do is we put the riboflavin drops over this de-epithelized cornea. Okay. So drop by drop we put riboflavin drops. Then after putting the riboflavin drops we use UVA light. Remember UVA light. You have UVA, B, C. So UVA light of 270 nanometer we use for 45 minutes. Nowadays there is an accelerated C3R also coming which is complete only in 10 minutes. But conventionally for the PG exam, you have to remember we give it for 30 to 45 minutes. And then after the procedure is over, because the epithelium is scrapped and the patient may have a lot of watering and pain, we put a bandage contact lens just to protect the epithelial surface to the patient. So this is the procedure of collagen cross linking. And this is done where to basically decrease or stop the progression of a keratoconus. Now another procedure which we can do to stop the progression of keratoconus is putting the PMMA rings. Okay, so these are the PMMA rings. Can you appreciate here? These are the PMMA rings which we put in the 
stroma of the cornea okay we can make a corneal tunnel and we can put a ring there these are called intacts or we also call it intracorneal ring segments okay so these are the various modalities of treatment in keratoconus hope this session would have been useful for you subscribe for the unacademy need plus program with my referral code that is dr vidin 10 thank you for watching let's crack it